Hi, I'm uh, Jared Cruz uh, with Zorro.com, and um, this is a huge wall of text d describing what Zorro.com is. Um, but basically, we were started by Granger uh, eight years ago. Uh, we are an e-commerce only company, um, about 600 million in sales, um, and and we are B two B focused. But um, we still do about 35 percent of our orders B two C, um, and and we're really more geared toward B2C as far as how we think about um, the transaction, and it's not a long purchase process, so it's, it's very transactional, um, and that's it. And then uh, this is me. I, I, I don't know why I put a picture of myself on a slide <laughs> when I'm standing right here, but... Um, <laughs> Just to give you kind of a gauge where we're coming from, um, we have a, a f about a half a million opt-ins on our list. We we um, run about five million emails a month and and ten to ten to fifteen unique campaigns. Each one probably has two to twenty different templates in it. So we're we're giving an idea of the scale of of, of our program. Um, just some context. Um, and, and really, I want to talk about uh, data and, and how to structure your data in order to make sure that you're enabling yourself to, to send the triggers that you want to send. I'm going to get a little bit in the weeds here because I, I think that um, a lot of the time at these conferences, people don't go into enough of the how, and, and it's more of the why and, and conceptual, and I, and I wanted to get into some detail on, on how you can go about making sure that, that your data is, is in a good place. Um, and when we, one of the things that keeps coming up is, is bad data, and, and people say they have bad data, and, and we can't do that because we don't have the data. And, and really what that means to me is we have bad data processing. We don't, we don't ingest the data and, and create a usable table or, or anything usable out of it. So it, the, the data processing is, is the key here. And, and when you take kind of your raw system extracts from all of these acronyms, um, then, then you need to, to mold that data into something that you can use in a final form. Um, and you, Lots of people have data teams and data engineers that, that do all of this for you, but they're not marketers like, like most of the people in this room are. They don't understand your needs. They don't understand what you need in order to do what you need to do. Um, so, so understanding the process and what they need from you is key, and, and you can't just punt to them and say, give me the table I need. You need to describe to them what the table you need. You need to communicate accurately what uh, those fields need to look like. And um, unification is an issue, duplicate data, right? So this is, this is an example I, I'm, I'm pulling up just to, to de demonstrate kind of what we're looking at as far as what a data engineer needs from you. So a data engineer sees this and says, well, your key is email address. You want one email address is one record, so I need to get rid of four of these. I'm going to pick number two here because that has the highest order count. So they're the most important one, and I'm just going to get rid of the other ones. Without that communication and, and without that working with closely with your data team, that could be a, a lot of lost data, and, and you're not going to be um, happy with the result. But if you sit down and, and instead of saying, hey, we're going we're gonna to get rid of all these records, you take this and you say, no, we're, we're going to go field by field, and we're going to decide which one of these to pull into your final table. So you can group by all, the email address, and you can choose which field is most important to you and why. So um, you know, it, maybe address, you want the most recent address you have. So you, you look at the order date most recently, and you pull that address. but um, for the uh, acquisition date, you want the earliest one. So you, so you pull a different field from a different record into your final table. Um, and then your result is clean. And, and you can even do things where you sum up the order count. So you don't lose all of those transactions. You combine them all into one record. Um, and then you're doing this, and, and you have all this raw data, but 
during this data processing step, you can append all of this other data. So these are, these are some of the fields that we came up with as a marketing team to say, hey, these are the things that we want to trigger on. These are the, these are the things we, we need every day. So let's add these into the field. Let's do this as part of the daily processing. And then um, we basically have a, a customer master file that's a flat file. We can upload it to the ESP, and we can do all of our triggers almost... 80% of our triggers based on just this one flat file. Um, you know, you, you, can, you can combine first order date, uh, last order date. You can, you can look at engagement with, with this files. Who's opened in the last six months? It's, it's an easy filter if you just layer on this and you don't have to do table joins. You don't have to do any, anything fancy in your ESP. You can just create a date filter. Um, you can layer in transaction data. So um, the AOV, the sales, the orders, combine all of that on a lifetime basis or a, or a rolling 12 basis. You can throw in preferences. So they really like Milwaukee tools. So we're going to trigger on Milwaukee tools. Or they buy from HVAC categories. So we're going we're gonna to be able to um, know that and trigger on it uh, based on just this master file. Um, we do some other things with third-party appends where we, we want to know more details about a business, so we do an industry ID and, and the, the size of the business. Um, and all of this gets into one table, and, and triggering becomes almost easy at that point. And um, the data structure is important. So, so understanding this helps you do, do a couple things, and one is knowing what's possible. So this is, this is actually what I delivered to our data team when we were redoing this model, and it was just an explanation of, hey, here's, here's what the data structure should look like. It, they, uh, so it was a simpler version of this, uh, I, you know, all these lines connecting things. That, that makes a lot of sense, but I didn't know how to do that when I was handing it. It was just an Excel spreadsheet, right? So it's, but it's here's the fields we need, and, and kind of here's a description of what each of these fields is, and, and I want to work with you to make sure that that's getting translated and calculated right so that we can trust this data. Um, and, and having this customer master, is, like I said, is, it's about 80% of the triggers we do are based on that, but, but there's some things that, that can't be um, built into a flat file. So, so relational tables uh, like this really help when you're looking at um, transactions where there's a, transaction, a sales order number level where here's the purchase data and then you need line item order level too to know what the products are in that, in that order. So um, scaling down the tables and, and understanding if you want to get to you know, a, a SKU, SKU level trigger. If you buy this SKU, then we're going to follow up with this email. Or if they buy this brand of product, then we're going to uh, send an a onboarding email for, for, that, for that brand. The other thing is um, we've, we've layered in, um, with the help of, of Foresight, um, marketing session or, or uh, web session data, browse data. And, and this is API directly in, into uh, Salesforce. And with this, we can trigger on all, all of our browse data, uh, abandoned cart, purchase history, um, uh, in real time. So, uh, it's, it's really nice. And then I, I have some, some examples here. So, so this is something we, really interesting that we did, I think. And this is, we, we took a new look at lapsed and lost emails. So I think in a lot of um, places, there's, there's kind of two steps to, to lost and lapsed. And that's, well, uh, we're going to define lapsed as uh, if you haven't opened an email in, in nine months or you haven't made a purchase in nine months. And, and we pick a number. We say, hey, if, if, if we haven't had it in this long, then then uh, that's, a lost, that, that's a lapsed or a lost customer. And, and we took it a step further and said, um, we're going to do a, a, um, a persona level trigger where we're going to look at the average order interval for a persona and say, hey, if, if you're past your average order interval and you're in that persona, we're going to trigger the lapsed uh, uh, email. Um, and, then, and then there was a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, errors there, a lot of false positives in that lapse. So we said, let's take it one step further and, and calculate everyone's average order interval. 
and not only that, we're going to calculate the standard deviation too. So um, if, if you're not familiar or you don't remember high school math, um, standard deviation is just a measurement of, of, a, of the range of the average. So it's really useful whenever you're talking about average, average order value, um, average order interval, any, anything you're talking about, you should, you should calculate the standard deviation too. Um, and, and basically what this lets you do is say, um, hey, your average order interval is 80, 80 days. You, you buy on average every 80 days. The standard deviation is 20, so 95% of your orders are going to be within 60 and 100 days. So if you go over 100 days, you're, you're outside your norm. Now we trigger the last. Instead of saying nine months, we can say, no, it's, it's for you. It's not 80 days, um, or, or for you, it's 120 days, et cetera. And, and, and um, we had some really good results from this. So we increased redemption rate, win back, by 40% by, by doing this on the lapsed and 13% uh, and on, on the lost. My next example is a, is a custom welcome series. By, so by appending that third-party data, we can get an industry ID or a SIC code. And we thought, hey, we, let's customize um, some welcome series for our biggest verticals. So we have a couple verticals we started with manufacturing. And we went uh, to our content team and said, let's really build out. Let's, let, this is a valuable segment for us. Let's really build out the welcome series um, and target these specific people um, that, are, that are manufacturers. And um, we, we, you can see I have the, the general welcome series, which is designed to appeal to everyone, and the, and the manufacturing welcome series, which focuses on pain points of manufacturers, uses their lingo, their language, things that, uh, visuals that they want to see, and um, built out the whole series in this similar fashion. It's a seven email series. Um, the, the key to this was um, really, really s being more relevant to, um, to this vertical for us. And uh, the, the results, I, I think, are, are the, the most interesting part to this because 60-day um, repeat rate is our, is our KPI for our welcome series. We want people to come back and, and make their second purchase. And, and this actually decreased it by 21% for, for the manufacturers. Um, and, but at the same time, AOV of the people that did come back increased by 37%. So we're digging into the data, but, but the presumption is this creative really resonated with a subset of that segment. So there was some people that, hey, the general appealed much more to. And, and this is kind of an example of, of how to take results of a test that, that maybe aren't great, but, but dig into the data and say, hey, this didn't work for everyone, but we can go back and, and resegment and, and um, figure out who this is really resonating with and why, and keep sending it to them and throw the other people back in, into the pool of the general because it's working better. Um, here's, here's just an example of, of missing data and, and, and bad data that we didn't have. So we were doing an, an abandoned cart series, and um, we have uh, promo-restricted brands. So, so brands that the margins too slim for us to, to include in our, our site-wide promos. And our product table didn't have that flag, so we didn't know what was um, eligible for discount and what wasn't. So we were sending abandoned cart emails with a promo in it t to, uh, to customers who had a restricted item in their cart. And um, this generated uh, complaints, as, as you would imagine. And uh, we were handcuffed for a long time until kind of we rebuilt the data model and said, well, let's make sure that we tie that, um, that field, that attribute, back to the product um, so, so that we can get dynamic. And, and, and we um, built this. This is, this is one template that, that is content aware. So if there's a product that um, uh, is not promo eligible, the, the the um, discount collapses, and we still want to touch them. We still we don't want to lose this touch point, um, but we just remove the promo, and then we were also able to in 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 the discount version to to uh, 
add a note to that product so that the customer was aware that that um, wasn't promo eligible. Um, I, we, we didn't, this is a, 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 a customer experience, we didn't A-B test it, but, but I can say like this is the best result that probably could have happened is I stopped getting all the calls from customer service and, and customers were a lot more happy. Um, and and um, with that, I, I'll hand over to Marion, and, and she can take you the rest of the way. Cool. Oh, you got that. Oh, you got that. Yeah. Um, so my name is Marion Price. I'm with Lenovo. Um, hopefully you all know Lenovo uh, as a PC company, but maybe what you don't know is Lenovo is really trying to to drive innovation in both the AR VR space as well as uh, smart devices and smart home. Um, so it's a really exciting place to be right now. Um, today is actually my one year anniversary at Lenovo, so it's super special being up here. Um, uh, I think we're waiting on the slide deck. But um, so one thing that's been touched on a lot since we've been here is um, right time. Uh, right message, right place. And, and I know it usually goes a little differently than that, but I think this is a maybe more effective way to think about that So that sort of statement is, um, are you hitting them at the right time? Which, if you're following D J or its data model, then uh, you've got all the data in place and it's not going to not going to break because it's triggering off of some incorrect data. Um, the right message, which is, again, the personalization part of thing that a lot of people have talked about, and in the right place, which has been brought up a lot via the different channels. But I just kind of want to go through them, particularly the right message side of things and thinking about when you're going to kind of think about how you're starting this. Because some people here are super advanced, but I think probably some people are, are probably less advanced. And especially Lenovo um, is sort of an older manufacturing company that's just now entering the digital space. And so trying to figure out how we, how we move from being this big B2B manufacturing company to, to actually even creating products on a one-to-one -one basis. It's, um, strangely easier for us to make 10,000 computers than it is to make one unique computer. <laughs> so um, thinking about that, not only in the manufacturing space, but also in the digital space. So in our, in our process of trying to go through and think about this building personalization engine um, within our own company, for us, we find it really helpful to find our North Star. So where do we want to be? What do we think is the gold standard of this business, what do we think this business is capable of, not only against our competitors, but also against the biggest e-commerce uh, e retailers in the space. So we don't want to be um, on par with our competitors. We want to be the best in the industry. So how do we go and achieve that? So we know that's our North Star. And <laughs> how do we get there is the next problem, because it's probably going to take us a while to get there, just based on where we are right now. So in the process of that, our next one is what's in our tech toolbox. So thinking about, for us, we have to know what we have available. Uh, we've got a plethora of great technology at Lenovo, and what we need to do is actually use the technology to the fullest capabilities. And I think it's really helpful to go and talk to these great vendors, like I know we've got Movil Inc. and Adobe here that we're using, um, but say, almost get a, a new sales pitch as if we're a prospect again, and have them tell us what their software is capable of, to, to use it effectively and then kind of have an <laughs> introspective moment and say, am I actually doing this with this product? Because I'm not going to be able to achieve all this greatness if I'm not using what I have. And, and if you're looking at your tech stack and saying, yes, I can do this kind of personalization with this tool or another kind of personalization with a different tool, it allows you to kind of figure out, one, what's possible, and then two, if there's holes in your tech stack, and then you can go find a new technology if you need it. Um, but it's just better than going and getting distracted by the next sort of shiny object that walks in the door and, and promises to connect all the dots for you in three weeks or less. So I think it's really important to know what you already have and how you're using it. Um, step three is know your people. Um, Jared touched on this a lot with knowing all the sort of purchase data and last purchase, last visit date. Um, and we have all of that as well, but it's also what a lot of people here have talked about in, knowing people's relationship to your brand. You know, are they totally net new and have joined within the past week or a month? Are they technically net new but have been on your list for a year and haven't bought anything? Are they for like one time only purchasers? Are they multiple purchasers? So knowing kind of where these people are and making sure you're using that as a layer of, of personalization. Another one you could do would be uh, propensity to buy. So we 
We track on our site through a company called Ignition One, uh, people's actions across the site and use their algorithm to track whether or not people are exhibiting buying signals. Um, but you could also do this if you don't have that sort of product uh, within your marketing automation system with a lead scoring model, which I know typically is a B2B type of thing, but I think there's a time and a place for it within the B2C model, and you can really use that if you're gonna start triggering off of this propensity to buy type of, type of score. Um, and then just other, you know, your basic demographic stuff. So I know for Lenovo, it's actually really important for us to know your age because that is a really big indicator of uh, what type of product you're gonna buy from us. We've got such a huge range of products. Uh, we really see that like our sort of 50 something white men that have been professionals love the ThinkPad brand, but the younger folks kind of like the yoga um, or even some of these sort of cool smart devices we're coming out with. Um, so those are sort of just knowing if you can kind of get this whole holistic picture of who you're talking to and figuring out the data points you have available. It's, you have to just know that before you can even sort of figure out how you're gonna get to this North Star because you have to know what's possible. And step number four is, is layering it. So you've got the information on your tech toolbox. You've got the information on your people and you know this. And so for us I know our North Star is, is one-to-one -one personalization using Adobe Experience Manager and Audience Manager, but for us, that's gonna take us a good six months to a year to get there. And so I have to say to my boss and our stakeholders that this is the progress we're gonna make in that sort of year to six month time period. So this is what we can do in a month to increase personalization through our triggers. This is what we're gonna do in three months. This is what we're gonna do in six months until we can say that we've made it, if you will. Um, and so thinking about something as simple as, I, I know probably everyone here has your basic abandoned cart, abandoned browse, welcome, post-purchase triggers, but what can you do to make those triggers more effective? And that's where layering in this personalization and knowledge of your data is going to really help you out in the long run, and then also in the short run. So making those small wins that are gonna quickly make your customers feel more understood. Because, I mean, it's my job to make money, but it's also my job to under, make these people feel understood by Lenovo um, and appreciated by Lenovo. So thinking about if I am just saying, hey, you forgot this item in your cart, they're like, cool. <laughs> but maybe I can also say, hey, here are some reviews about it. Here are some products people also liked about it. And that's just your basic next step. So we've already got that data coming through, our sort of Adobe Omniture feed. Um, maybe you're using Movable Ink to power these things, and we have that as well. Um, so they just kind of have to think, this is what we're already doing, what's the next step, the next iteration of that? Then from there, you can go and build on that even more. So those relationship to brand or propensity to buy scores, maybe you're not currently right now triggering off of those. So can you add in a layer so people have different routes they can go on based on how they actually have interacted with your brand or not interacted with your brand? Because there's probably, we have tons of people on our list who haven't interacted with the brand in six months. So how can we kind of draw them back in, make them feel special that one time they open our email so they kind of get back on our active list? Um, and you're gonna just continue to take these sort of active steps trying to move up that ladder. So starting at the bottom where your, your basic automation is and trying to move up these steps towards your North Star to layer it. So I know that's really high level conceptual stuff, but um, just trying to think about working backwards with what you have and trying to connect all the dots without getting distracted by fires or, or shiny things along the way. Thank you. Done. We're going to go Q&A? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jared and, Melissa and Marion, thank you very much. <laughs> hang on, hang on, see if we have any questions, if we have any follow-up questions. Jared, I wanted to follow up on, on one of your points, but a lot of the behaviors that you're seeing that are new and interesting to you that you're gleaning from email, are they going, are you, are you communicating and using them up, uh, moving them up in the organization so that you're able to let other marketers working in other channels know and ma make use of those, of those behaviors? Yeah, we are. And, and um, we work closely with, with kind of all, all the other channels and, and um, the biggest one we see is, is direct mail. So, so I know this is an email summit, but but direct mail is is coming back, and and smart direct mail is 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 here. When we can use browse data and we can link that back to the addresses, then we can we can trigger a abandoned cart 
messages or postcards to people that are on the uh, opt-out list or, or browse abandoned postcards to people that are on the opt-out list. And you can capture those people and those leads through direct mail that, that you can't do in, uh, legally in, in a lot of email instances. So using all of the data we have kind of together in, in all the channels is, is shown a, a lot of return for us. Marion and Jared, thank you very much. We're going to do that. We're going to do a